Hi, and welcome to the introductory to PSIM video. We are going to make a DC DC butt converter today. And to start, I'm going to open a new schematic file. And then I'm going to get a DC source. I can get one from the elements menu sources, voltage, DC source. Or I can get one from the elements toolbar down at the bottom of the screen. Hitting the left click will place the component onto the grid. I'm also going to need a resistor. Right clicking it will rotate it. I'll place that on the grid. I'm also going to need a MOSFET, available also down at the bottom, or elements, and then switches. Here are all the switches that uh, PSIM comes with. We'll take a MOSFET. Again, rotating it so that we get our desired orientation. And I'll place it. I'm also going to pull a capacitor and place that on the grid. Hitting escape brings the cursor back. I'm going to wire all these components up right now. Now I'm going to pull an inductor. And I can merely place it in series with the wire, and PSIM will automatically insert the component without further user input. And lastly, I'll pull up a diode, rotating it with right clicks to bring it to the correct orientation. Now, to drive the MOSFET, I need an on-off switch controller, which is this device right here. And this is mandatory to drive all active switches in PC. And to drive it, I'm going to pull a comparator. I can use the hand to move the graphic around by right-clicking. And I'm going to compare a reference voltage with a carrier wave, in this case, a triangle wave. And I'll wire those up. Now I need to define a ground node for the circuit. In this case, I'm going to choose the negative terminal of our DC source. And I also need to reference these to the same point. So now I'm going to edit the values. For the resistor, I'm going to put that to 5 ohms, and I'm going to change the name to R load. I can display those values as well. For the inductor, we'll make 1 milli, and you can see I'm using M for milli instead of using lots of decimals and zeros. The capacitor will make it 20 microfarads. Again, using micro. For the MOSFET, I'll leave it as an ideal switch, and the same with the diode. I'll change our source voltage to 50 volts. I can change the name to vSource. I can change the voltage reference to vReference. I'll change the amplitude to 0.5. So we'll end up with a 50% duty cycle. And I'll change the switching frequency to 10 kilohertz. Again, using K. I'll change the DC offset to zero. Now you may have noticed that throughout that, I didn't use the X to close the dialog box for each component. PSIM knows automatically that when I double click on another component that I'm interested in manipulating that component. I don't need to close these all the time. I also need to set up some waveforms. Let's measure the source voltage. Let's measure the voltage after the FET. And let's measure the voltage on the load. I'm also interested to know what the voltage is across the inductor. 
I can pull the voltage probe from down here, and this will allow me to measure the voltage between two nodes. I'm interested in the current flowing this resistor, and to do that, all I need to do is set the flag in the resistor to 1, and a current probe will automatically be generated. Simulation control is the last part I need to bring to the grid, and this runs everything to do with the simulation. And we'll, we'll change the time step to 5 microseconds, and we'll change the total time to 6 milliseconds, again, still using micro and milli. We won't deal with the lower functions um, in this video. Before I simulate, I'm going to rename these probes. Change this as well, and I'll change this to be source. Now we're ready to simulate. So I'm going to hit this button here, which is the simulation button. And let's plot the load voltage and the source voltage together. We can see our source voltage is 50 volts, and our steady state value of the load is 25. I'm going to add the other waveforms on a different plot. To do that, I hit the Add Screen button, and I'll plot all of these together. Now, it's a bit difficult to see what's going on with all these waveforms on the same plot, but we can see that the current is there, the voltage after the FET looks right, and the voltage on the inductor looks right. But let's simplify this a little bit by removing some of the curves by going to the Add Delete Curves button. Let's remove the voltage on the inductor and the current through the resistor. Now I'm going to use the Zoom button to look in on a few cycles of the waveform. You can see we have a 50% duty cycle, but let's measure what the switching frequency is. I will left click on one point of the waveform and I will right click on another point of the waveform. And we can see that we get a frequency measurement of 10 kilohertz and we also get some measurements which are the delta voltages between the two points. We can zoom back out by hitting redraw. Now I'm interested to look to see what the frequency and harmonics are of our steady state. To do that, I'm going to remove the bottom screen, and I'm going to remove the source voltage from this plot. And now steady state looks like it happens between 2 and 3 milliseconds. So let's redraw from there and restrict the data. So we'll just plot from 3 milliseconds on. Now I'll run an FFT. So here's the FFT results. We can look at both of them at the same time. So I'm going to zoom in past 20k and lower and capture the fundamental and the switching frequency. And it's a bit hard to see what this is, this little bump is down here. So let's redraw the y-axis in logarithmic. So we see our, our fundamental component here at 25 volts, and we see our switching frequency here at around just over 100 millivolts. And let's measure it. And we see, there we have it, 10 kilohertz. And this concludes getting started with PSIN.